Welcome to Essential Money Talks on a Tuesday at 11.30 a.m. Brisbane time or on a Monday night in the U.S. Today we have a special guest with us and um, today you're going to hear the story of a happy spender who wasn't always, well, she always enjoyed spending, but she wasn't the right kind of happy spender. Mm -hmm. She was the one that was happy in the moment but then might have some regrets when she went home. So I met, so I'm just going to have her introduce herself, how she met me, how she heard about the spending plan, first of all, and then we'll take it from there. So welcome, Sion. Sion. (laughs) I've been saying her name wrong for years, and so I'm trying to say it. Sion McWalter. Sion. Hi, everyone. Um, So I met Sherry we actually go to the same church but we met um a mutual friend was having a an information evening about spending plan she'd been doing it for a little bit um and I'd always thought I was pretty okay at budgeting but we were still living paycheck to paycheck week to week um and so I was like all right well let's just go along and have a look so Hubby and I went along and um, just really liked what we heard and went, you know what, there's obviously a better way of doing things and we want to give it a go. So we did. Excellent. Yes. I remember that evening. That was pre-COVID. Oh, it was. Yes. It was pre-COVID. So I think that was in. uh, It was about middle of 2019. It was. about. Mm. I think it was May 2019. Um, yeah. That was, yeah. So I miss those face to face ones. But today, yeah. uh, thank goodness to Zoom, we can do that. Yeah. My next question is what were your finances like, or what kind of spender were you before so, you became a happy spender? Okay. So I was an impulse buyer. Richard would try to rein me in. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't go like stupid crazy and I wouldn't lie to him about what I was spending money on and stuff, but I was more of an impulse buyer and he was more of a spendthrift, but we still just never, I had a budget worked out and we thought we were putting money aside for the things so that when bills would come in, we in theory had the money there, but in reality, whenever there was anything extra cropped up or any um, unexpected expenses, we would fall into a big hole. Um, And we just could not get out of that loop of just paycheck to paycheck pretty much. Like we'd get paid and money would run out before the next pay would come around. So we'd be, you know, tightening everything. And if anything came up in between, well... You know, we were either looking to see who we could borrow some money from or having to go without something else or it, it was stressful. It was it was pretty stressful. So it's not a fun way to live when everything is always right on the edge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And isn't that true when we uh, when we're taking say if we have a child and we're taking them on the cliff of a mountain, we say to the kid, let's get as far away from the edge as possible. Yep. Um, where, yes, a lot of people, and especially with COVID, and that's really changed things, people really are living on the edge financially. Mm-hmm. And there is a better way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then <laughs> living on the edge is really using a budget, a traditional budget. Right. And that's what we did for up until 19 yeah. years ago, is we used right. a traditional budget. But I realized it and made us live on the edge, and it didn't give us financial safety and security and it's extraordinarily stressful still like you think you're thinking of everything but you're not thinking of like you're only thinking of like five percent of stuff because you're not even aware of the things you're not thinking of because you've never been trained to think outside of this parameter that's like this um and so it's you're you're always always sort of behind um yeah Exactly. And it's hard and, to get ahead. Yeah, that constant stress. Um, welcome, Helena. Uh, there's a few of you who are watching and um, 
uh, welcome. And if you have any comments, please put them in the messages below. And welcome, V. So what has been the major change from having a traditional budget to a spending plan? What have been the benefits from having a spending plan? Okay, there's a lot. Look, I'm not going <laughs> to, you can't break it down to like, I mean, I can. The stress is gone. If I were to break it down to one thing, I would say the stress is gone. But to break that down further, it looks like um, so Friday afternoon, 5.45 p.m., we're fishing. I go to start the car. The batteries died, right? Mm -hmm. We're luckily enough that there's two other blokes there who are just about to leave who can give us a jump start. Previous to the spending planner, we probably would have had to call my mum up and say, hey, can we borrow a couple of hundred dollars so we can get a new battery? Um, but in this instance, we were able to go, okay, 5.45 Friday afternoon, all the places are closed. Bunnings is still open. With the jump start that we got, we drove to Bunnings, got a battery, took it out of the long term out of the big bad wolf account well actually no because we had it in the long term expenses mm -hmm. so we had money there for replacement battery every two years mm -hmm. and so we knew that was going to be coming up soon we'd just been rolling it over until we needed it we're able to just get that money put it get a battery no stress whatsoever and in the past that wouldn't have been possible we've had that happen with getting a flat tire and just being able to go okay we can just go get a new tire oh and the spare's crap so we can get a new spare mm -hmm. as well um, because all those things have been accounted for in the spending plan mm -hmm. like there's a there's a place that you can do all of that you can think of all the things that you don't normally think of like replacing your washing machine every seven years or ten years or um, replacing your passport every 10 years and replacing your mattress every 10 years. No one thinks about the fact they have to replace their mattress every 10 years, but you do. And so all these things are now in our spending plan and I know that I can look 10 years in advance and I will have the money for all of those things. And when something new comes up, like we've gone, oh, we'd like to get a little boat we can put it in there and work out how we can make it work and then say, right, well, we need to save this much if we want it by this time. Can we do it? Put it in. And mm. it says, no, you can't. So we go, okay, well, can we do it by this date? Yes, we can. Okay, great. And then next year we'll be able to get a boat. You know, it's not a chance we could have done that before. <laughs> yes. Not a chance. Like it just would not have been possible. So what you're saying is, is any of those unexpected things, mm -hmm. which really are expected, right. okay? Yeah. So you know you have to replace your battery, your car, your tires, your refrigerator, all those things. You have a plan in the spending plan for those things. Yes. And anytime and we think of new things, we can add them in as well. And they're there then. And you can cycle them as often as you want. So you might want every three years or a new laptop every two years or a new car every four years or... You know, you can pick when you want it and then look at it and adjust it as you need it. So, Excellent. Okay, so what happens to those? Um, do you have any unexpected things that happen? And where does that come from? Okay, so we've got a big bad wolf account. And it's... Um, got a $2,000, like we've worked towards having about a $2,000 minimum. Yeah. And then if there's any unexpected, unexpected things that just don't fit into anywhere else, then it comes out of the Big Bad Wolf account and then it will get topped up again until it's at least at that $2,000 mark. So there's always $2,000 sitting there. If we take out of it, then we will pull that money from somewhere else to get that big bad wolf account back up mm. to $2,000. And then once it's at that $2,000, we redirect that money towards some other form of saving um, towards something that we want. But to us having that 2000 minimum in the big bad wolf is that's a, a must have. Mm. And that will come priority over say a boat or 
um, you know, a holiday or things like that because those things, you know, that's where the peace of mind comes in. That's what I was going to say. It's not just the fun stuff. Like it's nice to be able to plan for it and go, well, we'll be able to get, you know, a, a small boat next year. But to know that there's $2,000 sitting there that's just for emergency stuff is the, the peace of mind that comes from that. Uh, I cannot adequately express Mm. how much of a relief it is to know that we don't have to make those awkward phone calls to family members saying, oh, sorry, we have to do this again, but could we borrow? Yeah. And so you've mentioned a long-term savings account, which is for the long-term yep. things you need to replace. You've mentioned a savings account for, you know, yep. your boat or whatever yep. you really want. You've mentioned yep. the Big Bad Wolf account because we yep. know that the Big Bad Wolf will come. It's not yep. if he comes. So what do you do with your bills? Oh, you got so the money for your bills or any other expenses, your right. birthdays, where does that Right. Happen? So we have a bills account. Mm -hmm. So our income, all our income goes into the bills account and then it gets redirected from the bills account to the long-term savings, to the big bad wolf, to the savings, to the date night account, to the various accounts um, that we have. And then the money <laughs> for the bills, those bills are put into the um, spending planner in under the bills account and so then that money in that bills account means that any upcoming bills ordinary bills power bills rent um medications groceries things all of that nature that money is in the um bills account until it needs to get spent on the bill and then you put it on the bill or you yeah. transfer the, the grocery money to another account. <laughs> yes, that's right. Which and that's what I was going to get to is the next account, which is your spending account right. or what we call the FFFI, that gets transferred out of your bill account right. to the spending. So FFFI that's your food, account, is, your fun, um, you know, so, yeah, our grocery money goes and incidentals, that money, medications, things, that money gets transferred out of the bills account every fortnight into the FFFI card, which is your main key card account. That's where you spend from. The bills account um, is where you might have your direct debits from for all your bills so you don't have to worry about overdraft fees from forgetting to pay a bill. So that's one that you have or that we have. All our direct debits come out of the bills account Mm. Um, for those bills so that we just know they're going to get paid and they'll get paid on time um, or we have it as a direct um, transfer in our bank account, which also then just comes directly from that. And then any actual spending gets done from the FFI um, FPOS card for groceries and um, incidentals and okay. things like and that. so the bills account is taking care of everything, all your bills, and that's expenses. That's anything that reoccurs. Mm -hmm. And your FFFI is for your food, fuel, fun, and incidentals that you give yourself in a certain amount each yep. fortnight or each paycheck that you'll spend. And once that goes to zero, what happens? Well, then you don't spend anymore. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like it's, 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 it's simple. So you just, yeah. we've, we've been able to... Um, actually work into our planner to have um, a surplus fund where there's, you know, a little bit each fortnight, which just um, that's for surplus things. Like if we have some friends over dinner and I need to get some extra ingredients that weren't yeah. included in the shopping list, I can pull that from the surplus, um, the surplus funds. Yeah. And that comes from that. But that again is accounted for. I'm not pulling it from somewhere else that it's needed that's accounted for for surpluses or like extra things that aren't emergencies but no but they're nice things but that... they're nice things and we also factor in date night and a clothing allowance yeah for us so that you know if if my husband needs some new shoes for work or we um you know, either of us need some clothes or we just want to go and grab a bite to eat or go get a gelato because it's a hot day or something, we can take that out of our date night and clothing account and that's a separate card as well 
and that's just for a little bit every fortnight so that we can we can still do things as a couple and have a date night and have it scheduled so we don't ever have to go, oh, we can't afford to go do anything, mm-hmm. oh, well, and then you just get stuck in a rut. So we allow a little bit yeah. for a date night. Even if it's, even if it's just $20 a fortnight, yeah. That yeah. enables you to go out and just get, you know, just get something small even or make, you know, get some ingredients for a picnic and go on a date so that you're still, you know. So it sounds like that you in. have a plan for everything that's going to happen, the expected as well as the unexpected, so that you can have total financial peace. We try to. Yes. <laughs> We try to. And, and, and if, if something plan, else comes up, if something oh, yeah. else comes up, the beauty of the spending plan is it's really flexible. So one thing that was such a such a blessing was at the start of the pandemic, um, I've got multiple complex health issues. Um, and at the start of the pandemic, we didn't know how it was going to go. And so we talked about it and went, okay. I think Richard needs to pull back from work for a bit because he was out in the community doing disability support work where he's interacting with a lot of different people who have a lot of different support workers who have a lot of different clients and you've got this huge network of people and we were like, this is risky. Um, So we talked about it and decided that it would probably be wise until we saw how it sort of would shake down to take a few weeks to a month off work and just see what was going to happen and the beautiful thing was with the spending plan now with the normal budget we could not have done this and it would have just been a frightful mess Mm -hmm. but with the spending plan I could go in there before we made the decision to see if we could make it work Mm -hmm. and then to see that we could make it work by pairing back this and adjusting that and um putting this on pause and, you know, all the adjustments we had to make so that then what we could live on, we could make work for, you know, this period of time. Mm. Um, And so we were able to, with the change in circumstances, change the spending planner and still make it work and see that all our bills were still going to be paid. There was no red there. We could still go right, our bills are going to be paid. There's going to be money in that account when it's needed for this bill and this bill and this bill and all our bills. And we'll still be paying everything on time. Um, And, again, the peace of mind of that, I can't overstate how much of a relief it was when the world was just going nuts to have that peace of mind, um, to be able to go, okay, huge change of circumstances for we're not really sure how long can we make this work and to be able to look at it and know that we have all of these things in there and we've thought of all these things and we can still make it work by making adjustments. So that's the real beauty of it is if your circumstances change, you can go in and, and change things up and make it work. If you lose a source of income or your income drops or you have to take some time off work or something, you can make adjustments and still have the peace of mind. Yeah, and that's because it recalculates itself immediately. Mm. You never have to use a calculator again with the spending planner because it does all the recalculation if you make any changes for anything. And it is your virtual spending life. It's right. a plan. That's what it is. It's a plan. We don't bank feed in because it, we're planning our perfect spending for the next year. Once we get it perfect in the plan and know you can afford all the things you want and cover everything, yep. all your bills and everything, then you get your actual bank accounts to do this, to follow the plan. Just like right. if you were building a house, you don't just don't go and start building a house. You have to have a blueprint first. Right. And so that's what the spending plan is. It's the blueprint for your finances in the future, not in the past. The past is gone. You yeah. don't worry about the past. We are planning your future. And then it's like it's a crystal ball of your future and yeah. a GPS telling you exactly how to do it. And yeah. so you don't have to guess anymore, like with right. the budget, whether right. you can afford something. You can test it out in your spending plan yeah. before you actually start to That's do that or spend absolutely. that Absolutely. And you can see how it's going to work. You can go, oh, well, actually... Yeah. I can't afford that much, but if I make it over a longer period of time, yes. I can afford it. 
because there's a little bit less that I have to commit each week then. Yeah. So you can play with the dates, you can play with the amounts and you can you can fiddle with it until you hit that sweet spot for you and yeah. your circumstances. That's right. And um, that's why where a budget a spending plan is different from the budget is the budget just deals with income and expenses, mm -hmm. whereas spending plan, we deal more importantly with expenses than income because as we learned in 2020 and still some no matter what your income is, it's your expenses that make make or break it. Right. But we add in the timing or the cash flow of your income and expenses. And that's how you can actually see how things are going to play out for the next year and up to 30 years is because right. of that third dimension that a budget does not. And have. that's that's really key because sometimes it's not a matter of you don't have enough money. It's just that the timing is a little bit off. So by adjusting something that's not time sensitive and pushing it back by three days, that means the money is available for the thing that is time sensitive. It's just, it's just a it's timing time. issue. And exactly. so that this allows you to see that rather than then your money go, your bank goes into overdraw because... And you, you know, you get hit with a forty dollar fee just because yeah. of a timing thing. When, for the sake of two days, for something else coming out, like it's, it's just yeah. so flexible, and that's that's really the, yeah, really the beauty. Of I it. use an analogy with that: is if you're going uh, four wheel driving at night up in the mountains, and you're going up the mountain, and you don't know that there's a big pothole in front of you. If you went through that pothole you're going to do some damage to your axle. But if there was a flashing hazard light, detour that way, and you follow that, then you're going to avoid that. That is what a spending plan is. A spending plan will show you when your bank balance is going to be too low in the future to cover any bills so that you don't have to guess anymore. You can right. see in six months' time, your bill's bank account is going to maybe be in the red as opposed to green, but you have time to make an adjustment. You yeah. can detour and make a change now. And, and that's adjust, why I love it. You can yeah, adjust. You can adjust the things that are more flexible so exactly. that things that aren't flexible will work. Yes. Um, and fit into that timing. Um, and it's, yeah. The okay. Well, I've loved that. having you on. I want you to end by just giving me, see if you can, I do a 30 second challenge yep. to try and use a word, a descriptive word of what a spending plan has brought to you and your husband. And so I'm going to say, get ready, set, okay. 30 seconds to just give me descriptive punch words. Okay, go for it. As many as possible? Yes. Peace, peace of mind, um, freedom satisfaction um peace i mean peace is the big one i can't i don't need to give you a hundred words i can give you the ones that are most important and that is peace of mind and security and a safety net and um freedom freedom from stress freedom from debt um and I'll just say, I'll add that's to you it. and getting what you really want. Yeah. I know you guys yeah. are avid fishers. And so that's yeah. a goal. Yeah. And you can put that in the plan and it will make it come true. Yeah. And the reason right. it can come true is because one, you have a big bad wolf in case things go belly yeah. up that so you don't have to steal from your savings right. account. You have something for your replacements. If the fridge breaks down, you have an account for your bills. You have the money for your weekly spending. Yeah. Everything's covered. Yeah so that you can get what you really want. Can I add one thing in closing? I won't yes. take long, but one thing in closing for anyone who is hesitant about spending money, saying I don't need to spend money for someone to tell me how to save money, trust me, it is worth it. When we did it back in 2019, it wasn't structured the way it was now and it was without question the most worthwhile thing we have ever spent money on at a time when we did not have a lot and our finances were a mess, I can still without any shadow of hesitation say that that was the best decision we made was spending that money so that Sherry could mentor us and we could have access to this and 
have the accountability and learn a different way of looking at money, invest in yourself and invest in your future with this little bit of money because the difference that it's made to our finances has saved us thousands and thousands and thousands and completely, we went from having nothing in the bank to having thousands of dollars in the bank Mm. simply from doing this and spending that money is what made it possible. So if you think spending money to be able to learn how to save money doesn't make sense, you're wrong because it is the best investment you will make for your future. And that's, yeah. Thank you so much for that. that. And that is so true. You will recoup anything you pay for me a hundred times over the first month or two. It's just, yeah, it's amazing. And over the course of a few years, you will recoup that 10 times over 50 times over like, it will, it will completely transform your finances and you will look at it and you go, dang it, I wish I knew about this years ago. <laughs> yeah. So yes. don't waste time um, yes. putting it off because you will regret not starting it sooner um, because it, it just utterly transforms. It's so nice to have money in the bank and to have yeah. a backup. I, I can't even, I yeah. can't thank you enough. Um, oh, and Sherry is a, a wonderful pleasure. mentor. And it was a, wonderful a pleasure teacher. working with you. And yeah. it, I still see, you know, so many years on all the little things that you are being able to do because yeah. you have a spending plan. And yeah. that just, it gives me goosebumps. And that's why I do what I do is yeah. because I know a spending plan works and it works really fast. Mm. And I just want to tell people about it. And the cost of my courses um, and yeah, they've changed since you have it. We have an eight week course, which is coming up. You know, people think, oh, is that all? Yeah, that's all. Mm-hmm. Um, you get so much value because I am just yeah. so passionate about yeah. helping people know that there is a better way to do their finances. And even if you think you're good with money, I can I make you to. amazing with money mm-hmm. because I used system, to think I was pretty good. Yeah, the system <laughs> is just innovative it's proven and i've been doing it for 20 years now yeah and and and, yeah, and being works. being okay or even good with a budget does still not put you in the same realm as being great with a spending planner yeah. or even being okay with a spending planner still yeah. puts you ahead of being great with a budget yeah it's, yeah. it's night and day. It's completely different. So Yeah. And then the two things that come to my mind, what a spending plan does is one, it brings that peace of mind that all your expenses, and I'm talking, mm-hmm. we have a long list that we have you think about and put in your plan. All your expenses planned or unplanned are all covered. And also, so you can get what you really want. Yeah. If you want that boat, if you want that holiday overseas, if you want that first home, you will get it. If you have a spending plan, because it tells you your money truth yeah, and you just follow it and be honest with it and it works. That's the key. You've got to be honest with it. Don't delude yeah. yourself that it's different to what it really is. Yes. Be honest and you will have the most success. Yes. Well, thank you so much thank for you, joining Sherry. us today. Thank you for all your help because it really oh. has transformed our our finances and our lives. So yes, so I, I enjoy watching your little trips, you know, your little <laughs> travel trips on yep. Facebook because I know that they're possible because of your spending yeah. plan. Plus just all the different things, the moves that you've made. It yes. just has really been inspiring. So I want to thank you for sharing with um, the thank other you for inviting me on. You're welcome because yeah, my goal is to help everybody's a spender, but I want to help you become a genuine happy spender. That's one who knows they've planned their spending, they've saved for it, which the software does amazingly for them and for you. Mm -hmm. So when you spend, you can happily spend and have zero regrets and get the things you really want. Yeah. So thank you again for joining us. And we will uh, see everyone again next Tuesday uh, for Essential Money Talks at 1130 Brisbane time.